Following slogans. Sometimes a little brain damage can help. And Simon says, go fuck yourself. And I say at the concession stand at the rear of the orchestra during intermission. We'll have a 20 minute intermission. Thank you. Well, she was singing it, 
self-defense, and my father used to walk around the house singing, I should have fucked old what's-her-name. <laughs> you like the sentimental tunes, you know. <laughs> I wrote a sentimental song. I think the title might be a little heavy-handed. We kissed and my balls exploded. <laughs> Too specific? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, some of you already know this, but I'll tell you. And that is, uh, I don't talk about myself a whole lot in my shows. You know, it's not my style. Not my style. But I had an incident in traffic recently that I think I ought to tell you about. There are a couple things about me you ought to know first. I drive kind of recklessly, I take a lot of chances, I never repair my vehicles, and I don't believe in traffic laws. <laughs> so I tend to have quite a high number of traffic accidents. And last week, I either ran over a sheep, or I ran over a small man wearing a sheepskin coat. I don't know because I didn't stop. <laughs> I do not stop when I have a traffic accident, do you? <laughs> you know, you can't. Hey, who has time? <laughs> not me. I hit somebody, I run somebody over, it's <laughs> I keep moving. Especially if I've injured someone. I do not get involved in that. <laughs> I'm not a doctor, I've had no medical training. I'm just another guy out driving around looking for little fun and I can't be stopping for everything. Well, let's just look at it logically. Let's be logical about it. If you do stop at the scene of an accident, all you do is add to the confusion. These people you ran over have enough troubles of their own without you stopping and making things worse. Leave these people alone. They've just been in a major traffic accident. The last thing they need is for you to stop and get out of your car and go over to the fire, because by now it is a fire. <laughs> Start bothering them with a lot of stupid questions. Are you hurt? <laughs> well, of course they're hurt. Look at all the blood. <laughs> you just ran over them with a ton and a half of steel. Of course they're hurt. Leave these people alone. Haven't you done enough? <laughs> For once in your life, do the decent thing. Don't get involved. In the first place, it's none of your business. Yes. Simple as that. The whole thing took place outside of your car. <laughs> Legally speaking, these people you ran over were not on your property at the time you ran them over. They were standing in the street that is city property you are not responsible. <laughs> if they don't like it, let them sue the mayor. <laughs> and besides, it happened back then. It's over now. Stop living in the past. Do yourself a favor, count your blessings, be glad it wasn't you. And I'll give you a practical reason not to stop. You need a practical reason? If you do stop, sooner or later the police are going to show up. Is that what you want? Answering a lot of foolish questions, lying to the authorities. <laughs> and by the way, who are you to be taking up the valuable time of the police department? <laughs> These men and women are professionals. They're supposed to be out fighting crime. Stop interfering with police work. <laughs> and besides, didn't anyone else see this accident? <laughs> huh? Are you the only one who can provide information? Surely the people you ran over caught a glimpse of the <laughs> So let them tell the police what happened. They were a lot closer to it than you were. There's no sense having two conflicting stories floating around about the same dumbass traffic accident. 
Things are bad enough. People are dead. Families have been destroyed. <laughs> Time to get moving. <laughs> now, If I should be out driving around looking for a little fun, and I see an accident, one that I'm not involved in, I stop immediately. <laughs> well, I want to get a good look at what's going on. I enjoy that sort of thing. Someone else is injured. I want to take a look. I am Curious George. <laughs> I don't like that. Oh, please, the police don't like that. They say you're rubbernecking. So you're blocking traffic. Uh, never mind that shit. I want to take a look. <laughs> I'm never too busy that I can't stop to enjoy someone else's suffering. <laughs> and I'll tell you something else. You might not like this, but as far as I'm concerned, the bigger the accident, the better it is. <laughs> well, I'm looking for a little entertainment. You know my favorite accident? Two buses and a chicken truck. <laughs> hit by a circus train in front of a flea market. <laughs> I stop, I expect a couple of fucking laughs. <laughs> and if my car should happen to be in such a position where I can't quite see what's going on, can't get a good enough look, I'm not the least bit shy about asking the police to bring the bodies over the <laughs> Pardon me, officer, would you fellows mind dragging that twisted-looking chap over here a little closer to the car, please? My wife has never seen anyone shaped quite like that. <laughs> Look at that, sugar lips. That's his ribcage sticking out of the glove compartment. <laughs> Thank you, officer. That will be all now. <laughs> you can throw him back on the pile. <laughs> we'll be moving along. And off I go out onto the highway, looking for a little fun. Perhaps a tanker truck filled with human waste will explode in front of the Pokemon factory. <laughs>
suicide, even though women attempted more. So men are better at it. <laughs> and some else you gals that want to be working on it. You want to be truly equal? You're going to have to start taking your own lives in greater numbers. <laughs> but I just think it's really interesting to know that at any moment, the odds are good that some guy is dragging a chair across the garage floor, <laughs> trying to get it right underneath that ceiling beam. You know, <laughs> don't want to be too far off center. If it's worth doing, it's worth doing right. <laughs> Somewhere else, another guy's going over and getting a gun out of a dresser drawer. Somebody else opening up a brand new package of razor blades. Maybe he's struggling with the cellophane a little bit. <laughs> oh, shit, it's always something bad. <laughs> I just think that's interesting as hell. That's probably the most interesting thing you can do with your life. End it. <laughs> I couldn't do that, though. Could you? I could never do that. I don't think I could commit suicide if my life depended on it. <laughs> but I understand it. I don't wonder why did he do that or what was he thinking. You know what I wonder? Where did he find the fucking time? <laughs> What's the time to be committing suicide? Aren't you busy? I got shit to do. <laughs> suicide would be way down on my list. Way down. Probably down past lighting my own house on fire. <laughs> I might want to try a little self-mutilation first. Take a couple of humps out of my arm. See if I like the general idea. Because <laughs> you gotta have priorities, man. You know? And you gotta have a plan for something like that's gotta be planned. People don't just run out of the house and jump off a bridge. It's stuff you have to decide. Timing is important. When you gotta do it, well, then she uh, I'm gonna kill herself when we're gonna do this. Wednesday's out, gotta take Timmy to the circus. <laughs> Survivor's on on Thursday. <laughs> Friday got my colon cleansing. <laughs> Folks are coming over on Sunday. Sunday! <laughs> my God, that'd be just a thing. Maybe Mom will find my body. Serve her right for fucking me up the way she did. <laughs> And you gotta figure out a method. How are you gonna do it? Right? Well, then she How am I gonna do this? Afraid of heights? That's no good. <laughs> Can't swallow pills. Don't like the sight of blood. Fucking oven's electric. <laughs> lie down in front of a train and the Amtrak ain't coming through here in 30 goddamn years. Just take a gun and shoot myself in the mouth. That'd be good. Nah, I suppose I'd miss. <laughs> People been laughing at me. <laughs> suppose I live. I have a big fucking hole in my head. <laughs> I have to wear some kind of dumbass hat. <laughs> nah, I guess I just hang myself. That'd be good. Gotta get a rope. Uh, shit, it's always something. <laughs> I got a rope in the garage. Ah, it's got a lot of grease and paint on it. I wanna get that stuff on my neck. <laughs> Walmart's having a special on rope this weekend. No sense to spend a lot of money to kill myself. And again, I always put it on my credit card and never have to pay the fucking <laughs> Sit down, I'm hanging myself, and Walmart's paying for it. <laughs> What's next? A note. Oh, Jesus, gotta express myself. Hell, if I express myself, I wouldn't be trying to do something like this. Where's a pen? Can never find a pen. I told the kids not to move the pen away from that telephone. Goddamn kids. I just kill them too. 
make it one of them family deals. <laughs> uh, here's a pen. Probably I'll just jab this fucking thing through my neck and get over it. <laughs> Let's see. Where do you put the date? I can never remember that. <laughs> to whom it may concern. <laughs> Yeah, it's kind of impersonal. Dear Marzell, ah, leaves out the kids. I know. Hey guys, guess what? <laughs> Keep on reading. <laughs> How are you? I hope you are fine. I am not fine. <laughs> As you can no doubt tell from me lying here dead on the floor. <laughs> You are the ones who drove me to this. I was doing just fine until you fuckers came along. I hope you're happy now that I'm dead. Signed, the corpse on the floor. P.S. Fuck you people. I'd rather be too busy working on the note all goddamn year. Trying to get it just right. Second draft, third revision, a whole new ending. <laughs> Finally turn into a book proposal and have a reason to live. <laughs> that wouldn't work. I like thinking about those kind of things, you know, suicide, shit like that. I think that's an interesting topic, don't you? Interesting, yeah. I think most people would agree it's kind of a curiosity. I'll bet you could have an all-suicide channel in this country. <laughs> oh, shit, they got all golf. What the fuck? <laughs> Ever watch golf? It's like watching the flies fuck. <laughs> you get people, if you can get people, a bunch of assholes to look at that bullshit, you know you get some people to watch suicide. All day long, 24 hours a day, nothing but suicides. One guy after another killing himself right in front of everybody. Must die TV. <laughs> you get a lot of people watch that shit. You get a lot of people volunteering to be on it too. Just so their friends can see them on TV. People are fucking goofy. <laughs> oh shit, now you get a lot of people volunteering for that. You get all them leftover assholes from Let's Make a Deal. They'd be lying up around the block putting on funny capes and costumes and makeup and shit and calling themselves Captain Suicide. <laughs> Guys would be competing for most unusual method. People would be jumping off of barns, lighting themselves on fire, putting rat poison on a hot dog. <laughs> Guys would be drinking Mop and Glow. <laughs> You'd probably get some weird fuck show up and figure out how to kill himself with dental floss and a crossbow. <laughs> People are fucking goofy. I bet you could get a married couple in one of them trailer parks get some married couple who'd be willing to sit in a love seat and blow each other's heads off with shotguns <laughs> while a love song is playing. <laughs> People are fucking nuts. This country is full of nitwits and assholes. Do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and they all vote. <laughs> They're the only ones who vote. It ain't me out there, I'll tell you that shit. <laughs> Look at the election returns. Who's doing the fucking voting? You know those people on the Jerry Springer show? Those are the average Americans. <laughs> yeah, below average don't get on the show. Below average are sitting home watching that shit. <laughs> get ready to vote, looking at their sample ballot. People are fucking goofy. And you know, if you're going to put this on television, you're going to have to deal with sweeps months. And everybody knows what that is now. That's those months in the year when the, when the networks go to a lot of trouble to put on their best attractions, their biggest stars and shit to get higher ratings for their advertising rates. So you'd have to do that too. You'd have to come up with special stuff. And I think uh, maybe mass suicides would be good. You know? <laughs> oh, yeah. And you can get, and this, this country's full of hopeless, fucked up people, by the way. You probably know that there's a bunch of them. There's all fucked up people. And it's going to be more because you know, Wall Street ain't finished with you folks yet. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All they did was take a shit, they haven't wiped their ass yet. <laughs> you got your fucking savings and your fucking retirement, they're coming after your house and car pretty quick here. You just watch these motherfuckers when it takes them. Like that housing bubble looks pretty good, don't it? <laughs> right, you fucking asshole with a 
drops it. Yeah. So there'd be a lot of people then walking around bumping into each other, holding hands, and wondering what the fuck's going on. And you can get them, I bet you. And you got a lot of hopeless people anyway. You got homeless folks, you got people with uh, condemned prisoners and life life sentences, people with that kind of shit, and you got terminal patients of all kinds. I'll bet you in this country you could get 500 fucked up people to hold hands and jump into the Grand Canyon. <laughs> for money, for money, you gotta give them some. <laughs> fucking toaster. <laughs> and you can put little cameras on their heads tell them it's jump cam. Wee! They love that shit. Maybe you get a bunch of these Christian assholes to do it and call it Jump for Jesus. <laughs> Give him a helping hand. <laughs> oh, you Christian fuck. He's at the bottom of the canyon. He's the one who's glowing. Look for the glowing man. Do the world a favor. Kill the fucking Christian today. No. You gotta do your part. You gotta fucking bitch and help, folks. Oh, you gotta have a lot of fucking fun. And you know, if you're gonna go on television, especially, like, let's say you decide not to go on cable and you want to go with the broadcast. Network, you gotta go to Fox. This is a Fox reality show if I ever heard one. You let Budweiser sponsor it. Budweiser and a whole bunch of car companies so people can be thinking about drinking and driving at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you put it on there and you gotta get a younger audience. You gotta go for that 18 to 24 year old demographic. That's what they're looking for. So you know what you do? You know how you get young people interested in suicide? You don't call it suicide, you call it extreme living. <laughs> Young people like suicide anyway, they didn't like it. Boy, I tell you, it's the third leading cause of death between 15 and 24 years of age. Third, it's ninth in the general population, so that'll give you an idea. And especially these young males, these teenage boys, a lot of them, uh, a lot of them kill themselves when they're jerking off. <laughs> yeah, did you ever hear about that? It's one of those things Americans can't handle, so they don't talk about it too much, but it's out there, folks. And it's extremely common. <laughs> it's called autoerotic asphyxiation. <laughs> a thousand of these kids die every year trying to pull this off, if you'll pardon the pun. <laughs> Here's how it works. Here's how it works. Apparently, I never tried it. It sounded risky to me. <laughs> Jerking off is all I need. You know what I mean? I ain't trying to double my money. Fuck that shit. <laughs> I just jerk off, wipe off my chest, get up, and go to work. <laughs> It's true that physiologically speaking, if you cut off your air supply just at the moment you're about to have an orgasm, the orgasm is about 900 times better. So what you got to do is you got to stand up on a chair or a bucket or something and, and put a rope around your neck and start jerking off. And while you're pulling your butt, you got to arrange to almost die. <laughs> And by the way, while all this is going on, you gotta maintain a hard on. <laughs> which is a tough deal right there, because you just might be getting ready to kill yourself. So you better be fantasizing about someone you really like. Or something you really like. I don't know, getting fucked in the ass by a game warden, maybe. <laughs> We're all different to each his own. <laughs> but uh, let's recap. You know? Let's recap. Stand on a chair. Rope around your neck, Peter in your hand. <laughs> and now you gotta figure it out so that you, you time it just right so that just before you come, you almost die. <laughs> and sometimes you miscalculate. <laughs> you don't know if you're coming or going. <laughs> the police, so they put the kid's dick away and say he had poor grades. <laughs> Girlfriend left him. 
the wonder lady look at his fucking hobbies. And then they blame it on heavy metal music. If it's suicide, they blame it on heavy metal. If it's rap, if it's murder, they blame it on rap. But it's never the parents. You ever notice that? They never have anything to do with these things. Parents, they're in the clear. They got, they're the most full of shit people in this country. It's these fucking parents. They got it made. They got it made. Listen. 16 years they've been raising this kid and they got nothing to do with the fact that he's hanging from the ceiling dead with his dick in his hand. <laughs> That's a pretty good job to have, you know? When a kid is fucked up, the parents had nothing to do with it. But if he's a winner, boy, they're the first ones out there standing up there. I'm his father, I'm his mother, you know, man. Well, that's good. If you can get that job, I guess you ought to have it. That's good. Yeah, there's a lot of things I think about when I'm sitting home alone and the power goes out, you know? <laughs> They're sitting there awaiting sentencing and ideas come in my head. Some of them are a little stranger than others, I'll grant you that. Here's one. I was thinking about all the younger women who got buried today. You ever think about that? Probably not. <laughs> younger women who died three or four days ago and got buried today. And some of them had a bad heart, some of them had a bad kidney. But a lot of them had perfectly good pussies. <laughs> good pussies, nice tits, reasonably tight assholes, <laughs> going to waste <laughs> in the ground. It just seems a shame to me <laughs> that some fine young pussy should be rotting away six feet under. <laughs> because you think that if you can donate a heart, <laughs> to someone who needs one, there ought to be a way to recycle some of these pussies and get them to people who need them. Some old guy living up the mountain. Wow. Look at this fucking thing. <laughs> Here's something you'll never hear a man say. Stop sucking my dick or I'll call the police. I'll tell you a Spanish curse. This is my fucking Spanish curse. Mis huevos son tus ojos. Mi verga tu nariz. Mis pelos son tus pestañas. Y mis mecos son tus lagañas. Y mi verga tu chupón. For you English folks, here's what it means. My balls are your eyes, my prick is your nose, and the hair on my balls is your eyebrows. <laughs> Also, it, and the next part of it is my tears are my cum, your tears are my cum. My cum is your tears, something like that. <laughs> and then my dick is your pacifier. <laughs> 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 And a similar mystery to me 
motivation books, motivation tapes. Why would anyone want to be motivated by someone else? I say if you lack motivation, the seminars are going to help you. What you probably need is to be smashed in the head 30 or 40 times with a bowling trophy. <laughs> That'll fucking motivate you. At least it'll get you up and moving around the room, you know, locate your socks, shit like that. Get the day rolling. If you ask me, this country could use a little less motivation. The people who are motivated are the ones who are causing all the trouble. Stock swindlers, serial killers, child molesters, Christian conservatives. These people are highly motivated. Highly motivated. They're not sitting around waiting for Tony Robbins to show up. And motivation's overrated anyway. You show me some lazy prick who's lying around all day watching game shows and stroking his penis, and I'll show you something that's not causing any fucking trouble. That's portable toilets and set on fire. <laughs> These people with bumper stickers that say, we are the proud parents of an honor student at the Franklin School or the Midvale Academy or whatever other innocent sounding name has been assigned to the indoctrination center where their child has been sent to be stripped of his individuality and turned into an obedient soul dead conformist. <laughs> achievements of their children. How would you like to have to live with a couple of these misfits? How's that science project coming along, Justin? Fuck you, Dad. <laughs> you simple-minded prick. Mind your own business and pass the Cheerios. Here's a bumper sticker I'd like to see. We are the proud parents of a child whose self-esteem is sufficient that he doesn't need us promoting his minor scholastic achievements on the back of our car. <laughs> of a child who has resisted his teacher's attempts to break his spirit and bend him to the will of his corporate masters. <laughs> then you have something realistic. We have a daughter in public school who hasn't been knocked up yet. <laughs> we have a son in public school who hasn't shot any of his classmates yet. But he does sell drugs to your honor students. <laughs> up your daughter. <laughs> then you have the people who aren't too proud of their children. What about them? We are the embarrassed parents of a cross-eyed little nitwit <laughs> who at the age of 10 not only continues to wet the bed but also shits on the school bus. <laughs> Something like that on the back of the car might get the child a little more incentive. You know? Get him to try a little harder next semester. If there's someone backstage that can turn off this air conditioner, whatever the fuck's blowing on me, there's like a gale out here. I'm just a little concerned about being out here for all this time with it on. If they can, if they can do that, thanks a lot. Well, Kate, look at the eyes. Sometimes I go like this. Sometimes I go like this. A lot of people don't do that. I'm not one of them. There are some more parents who ought to be beaten with heavy clubs and left bleeding in the moonlight. These are the ones who carry their babies around in these backpacks or front packs or slings or whatever these devices are called that are apparently designed to leave the parents' hands free to sort through high-end merchandise and reach for their platinum credit cards because it's always these upscale, yuppie-looking, greenpeace, environmentally conscious assholes who have <laughs> I say, hey, Mr. and Mrs. Natural Fibers. It's not camping equipment, it's a baby. Touch the little perp now and then. He'll thank you for it someday. These are the same people who sort their garbage, jog with their dogs, and listen to Steely Dan. You know, you just want to drag them out deep into the forest and disembowel them with a wooden cooking spoon. <laughs> National public radio people. Just the worst kind of fucking humans. <laughs> 
Here are some more people who ought to be <coughs> smashed across the face repeatedly with a piece of heavy mining equipment. <laughs> These grown men, grown men, who refer to their fathers as my daddy. <laughs> You hear a lot of this stupid shit in the South. These rebel assholes. My daddy, yeah, my daddy. But I tell you about my daddy. You know about my daddy. Well, my daddy. I tell you about my daddy. My daddy used to say. He used to say. Black, 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 Rustic rural country asshole. <laughs> Grow up, Billy Joe, Carl, Bob, Danny, Frank. <laughs> You're not six anymore. Closer to nine now. <laughs> and another unfortunate pack of mutants who ought to be penciled in for a sudden visit from the angel of death. <laughs> these guys, these guys who can't tell you about a phone call they have. Shit. <laughs> fucking pinky in the thumb. Like they attended mine college. <laughs> Studied under Marcel Marceau. So I call her up, you know. And I'm talking to her. And she fucking hangs up on me. So I hang up on her. Then she calls me back. I fucking hang up again. I say, hey, Bruno, thanks for the visual aid. But we all understand the concept of the telephone. You hold it in your hand, you talk into it. Excuse me, Bruno, incoming call. Oh, hey, it's for you. Self-important techno dicks <laughs> walk around wearing these hands-free telephone earpieces and headsets. Alex, Mr. Self-important doesn't want to be too far from the phone in case Henry Kissinger calls. <laughs> He's got the Dalai Lama online too. I say, hey, spaceman, as long as your hands are free, reach over here and fondle my balls. <laughs> Children record the outgoing message. Yeah. And you can't understand a word of it because the kid's a fucking imbecile. Close a family newsletter. 
<laughs> Just what you were hoping for. News about losers. <laughs> we're so proud of Brad, he's been accepted into dental school. Yeah, in the Philippines. <laughs> After four tries. Fuck Brad and everybody who looks like Brad. <laughs> Judging from his picture, I think he's jerking off too much. <laughs> Keep him away from Luann. <laughs> And another unfortunate bunch of genetic defectives who've been turned loose on these answering machines is these people who somehow can't resist the urge to include music on their message, you know? I mean, some guy spends eight dollars at Radio Shack and suddenly he's fucking Clive Davis. You know, I mean, it's a, it's a joke, boy. it's not a joke, it's a... What was I thinking? I had a good idea there. And it's my own idea, so I should know it. <laughs> Fuck it, I'll go to the next one. <laughs> oh, and on these answering machines, do me a favor, would you please? When you record your outgoing message, don't bother telling me you can't come to the phone. I understand that. <laughs> Apparently, that's why we have these machines. And don't tell me to leave my name and number. I thought of that. <laughs> and if you work in an office, never mind that stuff, I'm away from my desk. If you had to take a shit, say so. <laughs> you say, hi, this is Mary Louise. Last night I had the Mexican jalapeno chili bean dip takeout. And I washed it down with a quart of gin. <laughs> Children. <laughs> People who pay 
for inexpensive items with a credit card. <laughs> Folks, take my word for this, Raisinets is not a major purchase. Get some fucking cash together. No one should be paying a bank 18% interest on Tic Tacs. And you're holding up the fucking line, too. Some dorky looking prick with a fanny pack waiting to be approved for a bag of cheese doodles. I need this shit like I need an infected scrotum. Find some money. Next guy ahead of me online pays for Newsweek with a credit card. He's getting stabbed in the eyes. Right in the fucking eyes. Two stabs. Sick a guy's name Todd. You know, yeah, he's just a goofy fucking name. It's a goofy name. He's goofy. Hi, what's your name? Todd. I'm Todd. And this is Scott. And Blake and Blair and Blaine and Brent. Where are all these goofy fucking boys' names coming from? Taylor, Tyler, Jordan, Flynn. These are not real names! Want to hear a real name? Eddie. Eddie's a real name. What have happened, Eddie? He was here a minute ago. Joey and Jackie and Johnny and Phil, Bobby and Tommy and Danny and Bill. What happened? Todd and Cody and Dylan and Cameron and Tucker. Hi, Tucker. I'm Todd. <laughs> Boy, Todd, I'm Tucker. <laughs> Fuck Tucker. Tucker fucking sucks. <laughs> and Fuck Tucker's friend, Kyle. That's another soft name for a boy. Kyle. Soft names make soft people. I'll bet you anything that ten times out of ten, Vinny, Nikki, and Tony will beat the shit out of Todd, Scott, and Kyle. And there are some more people with missing chromosomes who ought to be thrown screaming from a helicopter. Gun enthusiasts. Description. I'm a gun enthusiast. Oh yeah? Well, I'm a blowjob enthusiast. <laughs> you wanna see me shoot? <laughs> Cock this and I'll discharge a load for you. Yeah. I'm not against guns. I'm not. I'm not one of those mindless Hollywood cocksuckers. I'm not against guns. I'm not against bullets. I'm not even against people shooting each other. <laughs> Someone is part of the American dream. I don't care who it is, parents, teachers, kids, fuck them, let them get shot. It doesn't disturb me in the least. But speaking of mindless Hollywood cocksuckers, before Charlton Heston became president of these dickless lunatics in the NRA, they had a different guy. He's still one of their major spokesmen, still one of their major spokesmen. His name is Wayne LaPierre. What kind of a name for a gun nut is Wayne LaPierre? Doesn't this sound a little fruity to you? Hi, I'm Wayne. I'm a gun person. Bang, bang. Now <laughs> this prick's name ought to be Biff Webster. Bud Crowley, a man's name, Chuck Steak. <laughs> Wayne LaPierre is just embarrassing. But I guess we ought to get used to it. We'll probably be hearing it a whole lot more now that Charlton Heston thinks he's a fucking cauliflower. <laughs> he doesn't have far to travel, does he? There are some more people. We got lots of these folks. Here's another group of men who ought to be strapped to a gurney and castrated with fishing knives. <laughs> white guys. White guys who shave their heads completely bald. You know, uh, yeah. They're so ashamed. They lost 11 hairs. 
they want to try to make it into some kind of a masculine statement. I say, hey, you goofy looking, baldy headed fuck. <laughs> Looks good on black guys. On you, it's ugly, repulsive, and disgusting. <laughs> you want to be bald? Do what I did. Wait a while. <laughs> Meantime, there's no excuse for running around looking like a freshly circumcised dick. <laughs> and just to kind of wind up this little litany of complaining, this is about some social criminals. These people in the space program. Nassholes, I call them. In case you haven't heard, the latest disaster for the rest of the universe is that the United States is going to go to Mars. Okay, oh yeah. Oh, we're going to go to Mars. And then, of course, we're going to colonize deep space with our microwave hot dogs and plastic vomit, fake dog shit, cinnamon dental floss, lemon scented toilet paper, edible women's panties, and sneakers with lights in the heels. <laughs> And all these other impressive things we've done down here. But let me ask you this. What are we going to tell the Intergalactic Council of Ministers the first time one of our teenage mothers throws her newborn baby into a dumpster? Huh? How are we going to explain that to the space people? How are we going to tell them our ambassador was late for the meeting because his breakfast was cold and he had to spend half an hour punching his wife around the kitchen? Now what are they going to think when they find out it's just a local custom that over 80 million women in the third world have had their clitorises forcibly removed to reduce their sexual pleasure so they won't cheat on their husbands? Can't you just sense how eager the rest of the universe is for us to show up? Can't you see them out there with a red carpet just to wait for those enlightened human beings to drop by? No wonder we can't pick up any radio signals from these people. They're not sending any. <laughs> too afraid we'll answer them. something bothers me when I'm flying first class and some guy from coach comes up and takes a shit in our bathroom. You know, I say, get back to your filthy coach toilet with the tampon sticking out of the commode. Don't be coming up here trying to upgrade your feces. Your super saver feces. Well, I think most people know by now, caviar feces smell much nicer than bologna sandwich feces. So unfortunately, it's not nice to say, you don't want to point out class distinctions, but it's a fact. It's a function of socioeconomics. It's called the fecal differential. It has to do with diet as it relates to income. The lower the income, the worse the diet, the more disgusting the feces. And the same thing is true of farts. And the worst farts of all, the most horrifying farts in the entire travel experience can be found in the economy section of any plane coming in from the third world. It is fucking torture back there. Underdeveloped country farts. Those people have farts that could kill cancer. The kind of fart that comes in handy if you have something that needs welding. The kind of fart that if you let one go at home, 30 minutes later, your plants are all yellow. <laughs> the kind of fart whereby, after two or three days, you begin to realize there are no more birds in your neighborhood. <laughs> A fart that would eat the stitching out of Levi's. <laughs> Can I get away with one more fart joke? <laughs> the kind of fart whereby the Centers for Disease Control declares your pants a level five biohazard. <laughs> What happens, what happens on these third world airplanes is that back in the economy section about an hour after the meal service, they quite often have these life-threatening fart emergencies. The FAA calls them TFIs, Toxic Flatulence Incidents. The airlines call them Code Browns. Just as the hospital has a code blue, they have Code Brown, Code Brown. <laughs> sound, do not inhale. You are in a code brown. And the 
worst place to be, the most, the most, the most dangerous part of the airplane during a code brown is in the last three rows. Because what happens is this, and this is simple physics. What happens is these planes, these planes get flying so fast that all the most vicious, lethal, volatile, flammable, unstable farts get pushed toward the back of the airplane where they become compressed and they pressure builds up and it builds and builds and builds until they reach critical fart density. CFD. And they continue to build throughout the entire flight until finally some kid turns on a Game Boy and boom! The whole back end of the plane blows off. And you know who gets blamed? Osama Bin Laden. It's true. These poor terrorists get blamed for these explosions that are nothing more than spontaneous, random, intermittent cabbage fart detonations. <laughs> FBI doesn't know this. The FBI is a pack of fucking nitwits you have protecting you. They're looking for explosives. They should be looking for minute traces of rice and bok choy. <laughs> These are the kind of thoughts that kept me out of the really good schools. <laughs> and prevented me from moving swiftly up the corporate ladder. Because I was always complaining. Yeah, always finding fault. You know, something else I'm getting tired of. Songs. There's too many fucking songs. That's all you ever hear is a fucking song. You know how many songs there are? Every year, 25,000 CDs come out. 25,000. Even if you threw out half of the titles and you said, well, they're old songs being re-recorded, and you stayed real conservative and said, well, maybe eight songs to a CD, that would still be 100,000 new songs every year. 100,000. And that's just one year, just one country. There's 185 other countries out there, all of them pumping out songs. Probably not a lot of snappy tunes coming out of Afghanistan these days. <laughs> But some is, I'm telling you, it adds up. I'll bet you, if you can count every song that's ever been written in the history of the world since the beginning of time, there's got to be, by now, got to be 15 million songs. Got to be easy, 15 million songs. Isn't that enough? <laughs> Don't have enough fucking songs for you people? Are you telling me you're standing in the shower with 15 million songs floating around out there? You can't think of something to sing? <laughs> you're gonna have a brand new song? And they're always love songs. That's all you ever hear is these fucking love songs. Can't somebody write a song about something else? Everything's a broken heart. Broken heart! Broken heart! <laughs> Fuck that. What about a fractured cheekbone? <laughs> or a punctured lung? We got to see some good looking chick with long hair and big tits stand on stage belting on a song about a punctured lung? It sure make my fucking weekend. No one is writing these songs. How about a song about a fire in a daycare center? All right, a nursing home. Okay, a church. A crowded fucking church. How about a song about a guy who gets his legs put in a wood chipper? Okay, you're sensitive. Here's a nice one. A family of four comes home from vacation to Disney World and finds 27 bodies decomposing in the living room. And they all have on Santa Claus suits. I'm telling you, I think we're passing up a lot of really good topics that would make terrific fucking songs. Like cancer. I know it's touchy. Fuck you. Cancer would make a really great song. Shit, everybody's got cancer. Nobody's singing about it. This is a market niche that's being completely overlooked. And by the way, tuberculosis is coming back. And would you like to hear a song with a whole lot of coughing in it? You never hear that. All you hear is these love songs, emotional pain. You know something? The last thing I'm interested in is someone else's emotional pain. Don't be singing about your pain. Unless it's cancer pain. <laughs> and you can sing about it all you want. In fact, you can scream about it for all I care. That's not a bad idea. How about a nice song with three minutes, some guy screaming with cancer pain? I know it's touchy. Blow me. It would make a terrific fucking song. And in this sick, twisted, fucked up country, it would be the number one song of the year. It's all you'd ever hear. I guarantee you on the radio, six or eight months is the only thing they fucking play. And that's just one cut. You could do a whole CD. <laughs> Diseases on parade. First cut, cancer. Second cut, tuberculosis. Three and a half minutes of solid coughing. 
and you structure it like a real song. Starts off slow with the introduction. Guy's just clearing his throat. <laughs> then you go to the first verse. <laughs> and a dry cough, non-productive. Now you get to the second verse, and the guy's the coughing gets louder. The song begins to build. Now you get to the chorus, and the guy's coughing louder and louder and harder and harder. And he's choking and wheezing and gasping and panting, and they can hear the fluids in his lungs. And he's doubled over, and finally he goes into one big, huge, uncontrollable, spasmodic coughing fit, and he pukes all over the microphone. That would be the climax to the song. And maybe you can even make it interactive with a CD-ROM. And the guy can puke right in your living room. Yeah, you probably need special speakers for that. I don't know, I'm not into the technical side. I'm more of an idea man. I'm a concept guy. You know what I am? I'm a visionary. I'm a fucking visionary. I'm always thinking, always thinking. Yeah, think, 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 think. Especially when I'm alone. Now, you're probably saying to yourself, what the fuck does this guy think about when he's alone? If this is the shit he's willing to say in public, what kind of garbage floats through this asshole's mind at home? Well, I'm gonna tell you. Next, I'm gonna tell you. You know what I think about when I'm alone? The first enema. I don't think about it all the time, but a lot, maybe 30, 40 times a day, it's not too much, is it? I don't dwell on it, it's just a quick thought, but let me ask you this, did you ever think about that? Did you ever think about the first enema? No. You know why? No vision. No fucking vision. Me, I'm always thinking. Always fucking thinking. At one time, I thought about the first enema. Here's where it happened. One day, me and my friend were giving each other an enema, okay? What? He's my friend. We are. Hey, what are friends for? If you can't give each other the occasional enema. So me and Leon are giving each other these enemas. And at this particular point, it was my turn. So I'm kind of relaxed. I'm draped over the end of the living room couch. And I'm reading the food section of the newspaper. I'm always looking for a good veal recipe. And me and Leon are talking, you know, we're talking back and forth. We're talking about hockey. We're talking about the NASDAQ. We're talking about how sometimes if you rub your eyes real hard, you can see kind of a checkerboard pattern. <laughs> and we're talking away, we're talking away, and suddenly, out of the blue, out of the blue, I turned to Leon. Well, I couldn't turn around all the way. <laughs> but kind of over my shoulder, I said, hey, Leon, I wonder whoever came up with the first enemy. Well, he flipped. Yeah. He had never thought of such a thing. He practically dropped the equipment he was holding. And that thing is heavy. It's a fire hose. Number 12 with a zoom nozzle. But it leaves you feeling really refreshed. So me and Leon spent the rest of the day talking about the first enemy. Because here's the interesting part. There had to be a first one. Had to be. Everything has to happen once. For the first time. Some guy. Okay, some guy just sitting in the thick of the enema, and I'm sure it was a guy. This does not sound like a lady's idea. Some guy, a long time ago, too, he was probably coughing spear tips that day. Maybe he's making a little fertility fetish for his girlfriend. Suddenly he thinks to himself, I think it would be a really great idea if I would squirt a whole bunch of water up my ass. <laughs> and then just let it all run out on the rocks. <laughs> I bet I would feel a whole lot better if I did that. <laughs> and then, and then, after he thought of it, take this, after he thought of it, then, had to explain it to the rest of the village <laughs> and test it. An idea like that 
you don't want to test it. And you probably want to test it on someone else or she wouldn't try it on you. But we have to be subtle, don't you think you need kind of a subtle approach? Hey Joey, turn around, I got a surprise for you. <laughs> Whoops, I dropped my rock. Would you pick it up for me, please? <laughs> Hold still. <laughs> Joey, it's okay, relax, relax. Breathe in and out, breathe in and out. Breathe, breathe. No, through your mouth, through your mouth, Joey, through your mouth. Okay. It's okay, it's a new thing, it's called the enema. I thought it up today during lunch. Yeah, I had to feel. Joey, tell the truth. You like it a little bit, huh? I kind of got a kick out of it myself. You want to go again? Uh, I don't blame you. That was pineapple juice. <laughs> it's sealed. Joey, guess what? We're engaged! <laughs> I'm only kidding you. Listen, I gotta go home and wash off my legs. I'll see you at the dance, okay? <laughs> Some guy had to think of that. How? Why? Why would it even enter your fucking mind? <laughs> I'll tell you why, because the guy was thinking big. He was a visionary. Probably made a fortune. It's a big business now. They call it colonic irrigation. Oh, it's big in California. All over California, someone's squirting something up somebody's ass. <laughs> I'm getting paid for it. Know what I'm waiting for? Enemas online. <laughs> Electronic digital enemas. E.lemma.com <laughs> slash pineapple juice. <laughs> they'll have it. You watch, they'll have it. Some guy's home tonight trying to get a mouse in his ass. <laughs> Probably a Macintosh guy. <laughs> we're always ahead of the curve for all this fucking thinking. Good ideas, fucking thinking. Good. I got a lot of good ideas. You probably notice that right away. Good fucking ideas. Here's what I got. Scrabble dummies. You don't have to use real words and they don't have to be spelled correctly. <laughs> Everybody wins. It's like school. No more losers in school, you know. Kids are too fragile to be told they lost. They play musical chairs. Now they have nine chairs, they have nine kids. It's fucking pathetic. I got a lot of good ideas. I'm gonna open up an adult donut shop. Adult donuts. The donuts are the same, but the holes have hair on them. <laughs> People don't like that. The police would never leave the parking lot. <laughs> right next to the donut shop, we're going to have a hot dog stand. For Gentile. Hot dogs with foreskins. <laughs> well, the Jewish guys have those kosher hot dogs that are kind of plain looking. These would have nice little foreskins hanging off the end. And maybe you can even sell the foreskins separately. Separate item, bucket of foreskins. <laughs> Give me a bucket of ten, the box of donut holes. And you go home and watch the playoffs. Good fucking ideas. I'm gonna open up a pool hall. You know what I'm gonna call it? Quit breaking my balls. <laughs> I you have a catchy name. Brand names are important. And brand names have changed a lot. In recent years, you notice they changed. It used to be simple, you had things like Johnson. Hello, hello, hello. Johnson & Johnson was a brand name, Smith Brothers, Ford, now you got things like, I can't believe it's not butter. <laughs> and even they have something new coming out, it's called, I sure hope the fuck this ain't lard. <laughs> <laughs> There's also a new in <clears throat> instant soup on the market, it's called, make it yourself, you lazy prick. <laughs> <laughs> Names interest me. I'm thinking of moving to Nevada where prostitution is legal and opening a bed and breakfast called the Cock and Muffin. 